Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Yes, Claudia. Mama, you asleep yet? It got too bad, my wife. Oh, I'm glad you're not. I'd hate to have to wake you up. I thought you had gone to bed. I mind my way. I came to borrow something from you. I think that's what you keep a mother around for, to borrow things from her. Well, aren't you glad you're good for something? Small pittance. What is it you want from me this time? Do you have an old pair of white cotton gloves? White cotton gloves? Yeah. Didn't you just say you were on your way to bed? Yes. Now you want to borrow a pair of white cotton gloves? Mm Mm-hmm. Didn't that wait for tomorrow morning? Well, I want them tonight. Let me get this straight. You're going to bed, and you want a pair of white cotton gloves to go to bed with? Exactly. Does your head ache very badly? Mama, for heaven's sakes, what's so strange about wanting to borrow a measly pair of white cotton gloves? I don't want your good ones. I want your oldest, worst ones. I'll ask no questions. I don't even want to know the reason. I probably wouldn't believe it if I was told. It's very simple. I just... No, no, don't tell me. Now, in what drawer do I keep? Oh, yes. Yes, this one. Mama, be sure to give me your oldest pair. Oh, don't worry. I have no intention of giving you my best for whatever it is you wanted. I don't know what you're thinking, Mrs. Brown, but I just want these white gloves to wear. I didn't expect you to hang them around your neck. They are for my hands. Oh, I thought we were wearing white gloves on our feet this season. If you'd listen, they are to keep my skin nice and smooth when I go to bed. Of course. Then when you get up, it doesn't matter what happens to them. You certainly are being gay tonight, Mama. Yeah, uh, here's a nice old pair. How are these? Perfect. They have two holes in them. Thanks, Mama. Don't thank me. Just leave me alone so I can get my beauty sleep. Sleep late. Don't bother about waking up for breakfast. I don't need that much beauty sleep, thank you. I take it you meant that as an insult. Of course I did. So long, Mama. Close the door well. I will rattle all night. Doors in houses that David builds don't rattle. Remember that. And back, David. Oh, you're not in bed yet. I will be in a jiffy. Mama asleep? Heavens no. You think I'd wake her up? I think you would. I haven't brushed my teeth yet, so don't hog the sink. I never hog anything. Hmm. Oh, it's a beautiful night, isn't it? It's so clear and cold. It's going to be wonderful sleeping up here in the winter, isn't it? Huh. Have you ever had any trouble sleeping? No, but I just expect to enjoy it more up here. Say, David, how do I look to you? Same as usual. Am I wearing well, would you think? Wearing well? Wearing what? Am I well preserved for my age? I'd say you look just about as old as you are, and you act at least ten years younger than you are. You're sure I don't look any older than I are? Ooh, hard to tell. I'm so used to you. You're a big help. You're not bad looking. Nothing sensational about you. I don't suppose I'd turn around on the street if you walked by me, but you're pleasant to have around. Don't knock yourself out giving me compliments. I won't. Oh, sometimes I wish I... Stop wishing anything, darling. I married you because you're you. You're... All I want. But me doesn't sound very exciting. Why couldn't I have been born with lavender eyes and auburn hair? Beautiful, smooth skin like a rose There petal. isn't anything the matter with your skin or your eyes or your hair. The only thing that matters with you is your brain. My brain's all right. I have you. Then what do you want with lavender eyes and auburn hair? You have me without them, too. Aren't you satisfied? You don't understand. I'd love it if you thought I was the most beautiful woman in the whole world. Well, maybe you are. To me. Am I? Hey, what brought all of this on, anyway? Oh, nothing. Except you're so handsome in your pajamas. You look pretty nifty in yours, too. Now, skadoodle, I want to brush my teeth. It's a lucky thing I don't have an inferiority complex as big as a watermelon. I don't know what gets into women. You meet them, you court them, you propose to them, you marry them, and then for no reason they want you to tell them that they're beautiful. Hey, where are you? I'm in the bathroom. You think uh, you'll want an extra blanket tonight? Mm, dip your finger out the window, see what it's like. I did. It's cold. Why are you bothering me about the extra blanket? Because you're the boss of the household. 
Since when? Since I promoted you from boss junior grade. Now, what have I done to deserve that? Oh, I'm a very generous guy. Hey, Claudia, for heaven's sake, hurry up. I want to get to bed before the sun rises. All right. You can go in now. Well, thanks, very. Claudia. Hmm? What, what, what's the matter? Your, your face. What have you done with it? My face, David? Well, I haven't done anything with it. It looks like patent leather. Oh, such a fuss. I just put a little nourishing cream on it. Nourishing cream? What for? For my face. Well, you look terrible. Take it off. It's a means to an end. I can't take it off. <laughs> What's the end? No wrinkles, beautiful skin. Well, there's nothing the matter with your skin. Not take it yet, off. maybe, but Julia said oh, that I... Oh, now you're listening to my sister-in-law. Well, she knows more about these things than you do or I do. That's all she knows about. Now, that's not true, and you know it, David. You said yourself she has a wonderful brain for stocks. Well, what did my esteemed sister-in-law say? Nothing, except... If I don't want to get wrinkles or dry skin, I should take care of myself now. Also, I have freckles. You have three. Four. No, I know that. Four. Four on the bridge of your nose, and I like them. You're not supposed to. I don't care if I'm not supposed to. I like them. You leave them right there. I married you for those four freckles. At last I know the reason. Well, anyway, what's so terrible about me putting a little nourishing cream on my face? Well, it's not a crime. It's just that it's not you. That's good. Why can't women leave themselves alone? The minute a woman gets a man, she starts trying to change herself, improving herself. Doesn't she realize that her husband married her because of the way she was? Well, I'm just trying to keep myself the way I was. I'm getting older. If I don't take care of myself, I'll look a mess when, when I... When you're put... 20. Well, I don't see why you're making such a fuss about me putting a little nourishing cream on my face. Yeah, it looks so sticky, it'll get all over the pillowcases. I'll put a towel on the pillowcase. Then it'll get all over the towel. Well, that's what the towel is for. Now, where are my gloves? Your gloves? Certainly. I want to put them on. That's what I borrowed them from Mama for. Put them on so the cream will stay on my hands all night. Your hands, too? Oh, they're the first things that show age. Uh, Julia says. Julia knows. She pays a fortune to find these things out. I'm not too proud to learn second hand. Well, all I can say is you look pretty ridiculous going to bed with your gloves on. Oh, wait till you see my hands in the morning. You'll sing another tune. You look so greasy. It washes off. I doubt it. Oh, you're so sweet. You make me feel so good, darling. David, this is the best nourishing cream on the market. Quite expensive. It'll do wonders. The wonder is that you're willing to buy anything expensive. Oh, I didn't buy it. No? No, I got it free. I bought cleansing cream, and they gave me this little tube as a sample. Oh. And there I use the cleansing cream, too, when I need to be cleansed. The workings inside of your head are really unique. They should be written up in a medical journal. There. I feel all wonderful and sticky. Mm, I bet you Julia notices the difference the next time she sees me, even if you don't. I noticed the difference already. You do? Mm, bad. Thanks. Hey, I thought you were in such a hurry to brush your teeth. I was. That's what I'm doing. I must admit you paralyzed me, all nourished up with cream. Shall I put out the light when I'm through? Put it out. I'm practically in bed now. <laughs> David, what's the matter? <laughs> oh, David, I, I can't understand a word you're saying. What's the matter? The mouth is all stuck together. I can't talk. David, you sick, darling. What happened? <laughs> Try and, and, and talk quietly. I can't understand you. There's nothing in here. I thought I heard someone shout. It's David, Mom, I, I don't know what's gotten into him. Here, David, what's the trouble? He's in the bathroom, Mom, just brushing his teeth, and I was getting to bed, and all of a sudden I... Well, well look at him. David, calm down. What is it? He's foaming at the mouth. David, you're drooling on the carpet, darling. Mom, is he having a stroke? Now, David, just tell us. What is it? What happened? Nourish your cream. Oh, darling, I can't understand a word you're saying. You talk as if your mouth is stuck together with cement. He has a wild no, look. No, no, what is it, David? No, 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 not Say cement. it again, no, slowly. I'm saying it. Not nourishing cream. Nourishing cream, not cement. What? <sighs> he says nourishing cream. Is that what you said, David? Just nod. Mm. He's nodding, Claudia. Nourishing cream? It's on my face, David. It's on my toothbrush. On your toothbrush? I thought it was toothpaste. Mama, he says he thought it was toothpaste. Oh, is that all? You have a mouthful of nourishing cream. 
It's all <laughs> sticky. I, I can't talk. I feel like the back of an envelope. Mama, should we help him? Well, I don't know what we can do. How does one yeah. take nourishing cream off? I don't know. I just put it on. I suppose he ought to wash his mouth out. Well, somebody do something. I'm going to be sick. Let me see. Washing doesn't take off creams and oils, does it? No. Water and oil doesn't mix. No. Well, then what do you think you ought to do, oh, Mama? Oh, this is awful. Wait till I get you for this. <laughs> I know, Mama. Soap. That's right, Claudia. Soap. <laughs> no. David, we think you ought to wash your mouth out with oh, soap. Nice, shut up, strong Mama. soap. I'll go down and get the if kitchen you soap. Move, if you move, I'll... Oh, this is the worst stuff I ever take. David, don't just stand there. Do something, I'm dear. I'm going to do something. I'm going to take you over my knee and give you a whaling. You're going to take me over your knee? What have I done? You left the top off that tube. You left it right next to my toothbrush. You had to go out and buy it in the first place. If you don't look before you brush, that's not my fault, David Norton. Besides, I'm the one who should take you over my knee. Yeah, I'm dizzy. It's so sticky. Just because the cream says mm. nourishing cream is no reason why you should eat it. Try and swallow it, David. Uh, it's mainly vegetable oil. Swallow it. <laughs> no, no, no. Not that. <laughs> If you weren't so pathetic looking, I'd be furious with you. My nourishing cream, the most expensive cream on the market. Mm-hmm. You had to go wasting it, eating it, brushing your teeth with it. Are, um, are you scolding me? David, don't look at me like that. That was the end. Hand me the hairbrush, Mother. I don't blame you, David. Here's the brush. David, what, what are you going to do? <laughs> Lean over, young woman. David, don't do that. Hey. Darling. Oh, you too. The pleasant custom of pausing to hear a favorite radio show in the midst of the day's work can be made even pleasanter if you get a bottle of Coca-Cola from the refrigerator before the program begins. Delicious ice-cold Coke is always welcome. And even the best of entertainment is more appealing when you listen refreshed. Uh, Yes, Mrs. Brown. Tell me, how can David get rid of the flavor of nourishing cream on his palate? Uh, Let me see. Uh, How about a little kerosene, maybe? An excellent suggestion, I'll tell him. (laughs) Just don't say I suggested it. He's scrubbing away at this very moment with soap and toothpaste. Oh, I feel for David. Must be quite a shock to think you have toothpaste in your mouth and find (laughs) a nourishing cream. Well, I guess I'd better let you get back to what you were going to say. We'd all plan to get to bed very early tonight, and here it is late again. Yes, that's right. David's going back to work Monday, isn't he? Yes, the first day since his accident. Quite an event. Indeed it is. Congratulate him for me. I will. Goodbye, Joe. So long, Mrs. Brown. As I was about to say, every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again Monday at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. The parts of Claudia and David on this program were played by Catherine Bard and Paul Crabtree. And the entire production is supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.